New and rare, let's check out the first cash strength whiskies to come out of the old Bushmills distillery under their own name in over 15 years. Let's drink some whiskey. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser, Brian, coming to you from a very awesome, very cool Christie's Bar in Kilkenny. Big shout out to Anthony and Liam. Thanks once again during the coronavirus restrictions to allow me to use this place as my backdrop and drink some awesome whiskeys. Today we have not one, but two rare and unique cask strength, cask expressions from the old Bushmills distillery. Um, you could call it a double dose of decadence. You could call it a delightful dish of different cask expressions. You could call it uh, cask expression coolness concoctions, whatever. Today we're talking and we're drinking Bushmills. In particular, the 2008 Muscatel and the 1995 Malaga cask, cask strength single malts. Personally, I think Double Dose of Decadence was a better name, but you know, whatever. Okay, so let's get drinking some Bushmills. Firstly, uh, let's clear one or two things up. I did a bit of research on the brand as you do. Um, 1608 on the bottle bears absolutely no reference to the distilling history of the company um, and people say they are the oldest licensed distillery in the world and that 1608 bears reference to the distilling that's not true um, firstly King James the first in 1608 granted Sir Thomas Phillips a license to distill in the county of Coleraine in the territory of Antrim. And the 1608 most likely bears reference to that patent, or they call it a patent, but basically what it was was King James I put patents on different uh, industries within Ireland, which was a ploy by the crown to make the Irish more loyal to the crown. Um, and the license was granted to, as I said, Antrim. Technically distilleries didn't exist in 1608. And it wasn't until 1784 when Hugh Anderson actually set up the company properly. In 1860, the company was sold to Belfast merchants James McColgan and Patrick James McColgan and Patrick Corrigan, and uh, where. They ran it, and then in 1885, the old Bushmills distillery actually went on fire and burned down. So a lot of the uh, historic paperwork and all that was lost to the test of times. It was quickly rebuilt um, in 1890. Um, and 1890 was when we see the first reference to the SS Bushmills steamship, which sailed from Ireland to America, and then on to Hong Kong and Singapore, delivering and spreading the good word of Bushmills Irish whiskey. So if we go up to around the time of Prohibition, and uh, we're all aware, or we should be aware of how Prohibition, uh, mixed with other different things, uh, nearly wiped out the Irish uh, whiskey industry. And Wilson Boyd, who was then the director of the company at the time, actually foresaw and predicted the end of Prohibition. And during the time of Prohibition, they had been building up their stocks. And once Prohibition ended, they had tons of stock to get rid of. And they did so, and it saved them from actually going completely bust and completely under. Like a lot of distilleries in Ireland at the time that were completely wiped out. So in 1972, the Old Bushmills Distillery got taken over by Irish distillers. And in 1988, Irish distillers got bought by Pernod Ricard. Um, if we kind of jump forward to 2005, Pernod Ricard sold the Old Bushmills Distillery to Diageo, which then, <laughs> in 2014, Diageo traded the Bushmills brand for 50% 50 stake in Don Julio whiskey or tequila. Don Julio tequila that was by Jose Cuervo. So a lot of stuff going on between 70s, 80s, noughties, and um, even more so on, on the release side of things. Um, there's plenty of private bottlings in those times. And Bushmills was it was always just it literally was a sleeping giant. So jumping into these two uh, expressions, these are the curation and the ideas of Helen Mulholland. 
And Helen Mulholland is the master blender in the Bushmills Distillery who has been there from 25 year, for 25 years. Uh, she started out in the lab, I believe. I was reading a, an article the other day. She actually started out in the lab out of her college days. Um, and 25 years later, she had worked her way up the entire ladder to become master blender. Um, she was inducted into the Whiskey Magazine Hall of Fame in 2018. And uh, I also read in the press release that the 95 was basically her life's work. Um, she's what, what she's aspired to do. So this is a big deal for uh, for Bushmills and, and this, this kind of, this release. And as I said, I suppose, uh, for a lot of collectors and whiskey drinkers, the Bushmills would have been considered uh, somewhat of a sleeping giant. Um, when you do take into account of all the latest whiskies that have been released by all the different brands in Ireland, um, they've been a little slow, but I don't think they've, they've been asleep. I actually think they've been biding their time to drop some really great expressions and uh, really put in the effort and the time that it takes and not rushing to the market just because everyone else is doing it. So they've been around for a long time. They know what they're doing. Um, I have full belief in Helen Mulholland that she knows what she's doing because I've heard some awesome things about these whiskeys. I've seen a few people drinking it, little bits of snippets of uh, reviews here and there. Uh, so I really had to try it for myself. And I suppose this is a great time to say, guys, if you want to see me drink any type of Irish whiskey, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want me to drink and I'll do my very best. I have tons of whiskeys here in Christie's Bar. They've been gracious enough to allow me to try whatever you guys want to see within reason. We're not going open a Middleton Pearls here. Get real, man. A 15, you know, that, that's, I'm not going to say how much it is, but anybody who's in the know knows we're not opening that one. But uh, yeah, so let me know, leave a comment and uh, I'll do my best to get it to you. Like and subscribe. So let's do this. First one up, I, I'm excited about this. I haven't actually, um, I haven't drank this and I am excited to say the least about this. First aged eight years in a mixture of Sherry Oloroso and bourbon barrels and then finished for uh, a further four years in Muscatel casks. A one-time release of 1,454 bottles at 56.4% ABV, non-chill filtered, and 100 euros RRP. Color that. I don't know if you can see the color of it. All right, the 2008 Muscatel. A little bit of grain. It's kind of a florally accent to it. Um, Tangerine, maybe kind of a, uh, no, no, maybe an orange peel kind of note to it with a bit of shoe. caramel, caramel uh, and, a, and a hint of vanilla. It's definitely single malt anyway, yeah. Cheers, let's try it. Wow. Tons and tons of sweetness. That's incredible because you won't, I don't get that much sweetness on the nose. Um, wow, it's bursting with sweetness, bursting with fruits. I would say loads of spice, very, very spicy. Nice spice, not, not you know, not over intrusive. It's incredibly smooth. A little bit of the wood tannins, some vanilla, just loads of fruit. That is really good. That is really, really good. I can see what all the hype was and yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad. I, I'm, I'm thrilled that it's, uh, lovely finished, well balanced, right across the mouth, front to back. Sweetness, fruits, a little bit of wood and vanilla and the spice follows through. That's the 2008 um, Causeway Muscatel. It says sweet raisin finish. I'm not really getting that. Definitely getting the, uh, the hints of citrus, all right. All right, the second one. 
25 years, 25 years, 10 years in Oloroso butts and bourbon barrels and 14 years in Malaga casks, which uh, to my understanding is meant to be really impressive. I, I, I don't understand um, to a certain extent some of the, the more exotic finish, wood finish um, maturations. And uh, especially when it goes, when someone says that it shouldn't be that, or not that it shouldn't be, but that it's extraordinary to see a whiskey being finished for 14 years in something like that. I I suppose we're gonna, we're gonna find out in a second. Um, so yeah, 10 years in Oloroso butts and bourbon barrels, then 14 years in uh, Malaga cast non-chill filtered, one time release of 2,491 bottles, 53.5% ABV. This is bottle number 1426. And it, these are RP is, I think 400, 400 euros is the RRP on it. Now, the light difference, this is a, definitely a more darker finish to it. Um, okay, that's different. Wood spices. It's like uh, almost like dark, dark fruits, dark fruit notes. Um, plenty of wood in it. See, even a bit of dark chocolate in there. It's it's very um, it's very decadent. It's very uh, I would say dense. It's very you, you can you can smell the uh, you can smell the thickness of it if that if that is a thing. All right, let's try this. I'm excited for this one. Sláinte. Yeah, okay, not as spicy as this one, but I'm getting more plums. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a lot denser, a lot heavier. Um, a bit of vanilla in it. Wow, it balanced out lovely. It really smoothed itself out. Now I'm left with these kind of sweet, um, sweet sugars from the fruits. Just um, really beautiful. That is a, a sipper. You could, I would, I would gladly sit there and just try and pick out different flavors. It's still there, and it's 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 cold to the mouth, lovely. It's it's still hanging. Um, the spice for this in the in the 2008 I found uh, held around really really long. This one has mellowed out completely across the palate. Um, but it's still there. It hasn't disappeared. It hasn't, it's, it's mellowed down. Well, it's mellowed to begin with, I suppose. Not as spicy, but it's, it's, it's definitely hung around. Uh, uh, even that's what I'm thinking. I was trying to throw something else on the palate there. It was a nuttiness. It was a nuttiness to it. And, um, oh, that's incredible. Yeah. So there's the two brand new cask strength expressions from Bushmills, the 2008 uh, Muscatel and the, two, the 1995 uh, Malaga cask, uh, the Causeway collection. They, I, I th think they're still available. Um, the 2008, because it was so well priced, I think that might be hard to find. Um, but the 95 um, Malaga is still definitely very much around. Um, I would, I couldn't, they, they, they're two totally, completely different whiskeys. Um, but so well balanced, uh, such flavorful expressions, great examples of single malt whiskey. Um, I would love to see more of these coming from Bushmills because I think really, you know, um, I'm a, I, well, obviously I'm a huge whiskey fan in general, uh, pot still, uh, single malt, blended, single grains, but Lately, I've been digging a little bit more towards the single malt side of things. I just find the very uh, fruity aspects of it to be a bit more to my palate. But um, that's not to say now, if you hand me a very expensive pot still, then I'll still drink it and love it. But uh, yeah, for the money, not bad. Um, for the flavor, absolutely fantastic. Uh, you couldn't really go too far wrong with that. So uh, my recommendation is two thumbs up, definitely. Have a look at these if you can get a sample of it and try them out. Um, it'll definitely be worth your while. You'll see what I mean about the two. The best, if you can even do that, is to put them side by side and compare 
the, the difference in the flavors because I found this to be a bit of a spice beast and this one was just all around sweetness and flavor and, and full bodied. And uh, that's what we have with these. And they've done a great job. And I'm thrilled to be able to try them. And thank you to Christie's for supplying them and, and allowing me to actually open these. Um, they're available here. And if you are in Kilkenny, hit me up. Uh, like and subscribe and comment. Uh, get you more content coming. We have tons of stuff on. As soon as these restrictions ease up a little bit more, uh, you'll start to see what this channel is really going to be bringing to you. Um, we can't do much right now because of the restrictions and that's okay. We'll play it, you know, we'll be safe and we'll do our part and uh, we'll keep bringing you some awesome reviews. So once again, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, um, hit me up on Instagram or whatever. And if you have a question, I've tried tons of whiskeys. I just maybe not have reviewed them, but uh, if you're looking for um, my opinions on, on specific bottles, hit me up. I'd be happy to chat to you. All right, for myself, Brian Hennessy on Whiskey and Whiskey, Whiskey Chaser, Slauncher. See you next time.